That's what I. That's what you're looking at. Uh, hi, Teresa. All right, guys. It's 4:31. Let's get started. We're a little, little, lot, lot fewer numbers than than we have been polling, but that's okay. You guys are the ones that need to be here, and I'm excited that you're here. Hi, Marie. Welcome. Uh, let's. Um, it, it was a change of time, and you guys will let me know whether this time is better for you or the 11 a.m. time um, over the next day or two. You can either email me or mention it in chat. Uh, my plan, I think, is to go ahead and move it to the afternoon. I think we'll get the least amount of internet usage here at the building about this time of day, and hopefully, most of you guys will be either off work or are already off work and can just uh, join whenever it's convenient. Um, and, um, you know, my plan is just to keep these things going until we can all get together again. Um, those of you guys are, that are out of town and um, um, just joining in, just hopefully maybe to learn something. Um, hopefully I'm giving you something that other ukulele teachers or other that you've run into in other places. Um, for those of you who are new to our workshops here, what I'm doing is basically giving you my introduction to ukulele class, sort of one hour at a time blocks. And um, thanks, Vicki. We did a lot of work to fix that, the sound, so I'm glad it sounds good. Um, what I'm really trying to do is th those of you in town, just keep your skills going. You know, I miss seeing all you guys and it's really disappointing that this is what we're dealing with, but we'll get through it. Um, the other, for those of you out of town, um, I teach Basically, I teach ukulele backwards. Um, I don't start with chords. I start with melody playing and reading tablature. I use really a fairly limited number of songs in most of my teaching uh, because I want you to build your toolbox and your skill set. That's what's really important, um, whether you can uh, uh, play your favorite song from your teenage years. I don't know. I guess that's there. There's that's where how most ukulele is taught. Um, I don't find that people I don't think it works. So I do it a different way. What I'd like to do, though, however, after all of that long discussion was to go into the um, the key of C strummers. And um, what I want you to do is pull up the page that looks like that. Whoops. Hold on. Wait, see technology. It's awesome. Um, the page that looks like this one. We're going to cover this one first. Um, see that. So if you guys could pull up that one, it's got Waltzy Matilda and Soft Kitty on it. That's the one I'd like for you to um, get in front of you. What we'll be working on first today is just getting comfortable with those four chords. Um, hi, Amy. Welcome. Um, Key C chord, A minor chord, F chord, G or G7, uh, and in this case we're going to be working on G. The those of you guys that are good and solid on this stuff, one of the things I think that um, you're thinking about is, hey, I'm going to teach somebody else how to play, and I'm going to steal whatever Gary has uh, to help me do that. Um, the biggest single biggest thing I can tell you is that forever and forever and forever, thanks, John, <laughs> he's not a nice cat. Uh, no, he's a really nice cat. Uh, what I've been teaching forever and forever was teach the C chord and then, and then teach waltzing Matilda is the first thing when students come in. And I kept finding I was failing on that. Uh, and the reason is when you teach C chord as your first chord to show somebody, um, inevitably G chord is coming along for the ride. And G chord is a bummer when you first start ukulele. And that's why I no longer teach C chord as the first chord. Um, I teach A chord because it is so much easier for a new person to do A, D, and E7 than it is to, for them to do C, F, and then this darn G chord. And so that's why I kind of do it backward, and um, I would think um, you should do it too, right? Um, but most ukulele glasses, they start with C chord. That's how they work it, and um, I just know from my experience it's not the best way to go. Um, let's see. Who else just joined us? Pretty 42, Ott. Hey, Ott. <laughs> hey, Ott. Good to hear from you. Good to see you. Um, and hi, Danella. Thanks for, thanks for being here. Um, glad, glad the sound in the video looks good. Apologize for this white stripe there. Um, I don't know. We'll, I'll, I don't know. 
I'm going to work on the lighting. I'm going to see if I can get it a little bit cleaner for you guys tomorrow. Um, all right, ukuleles up. Let's grab these. Um, I'm using my soprano Kamaka because it sounds pretty good and I and I like it. Um, but uh, you can use whatever ukulele makes you happy. Yeah, this is my G G string. Here's my C string. There's my E string. And here's my A string. And I see Ian has logged in. Hello, Ian. Delighted to have you. That's so exciting to see you. And and uh, don't worry about the white stripes. Yeah, <laughs> it's the black and white stripes you got to worry about. All right. So you've got your ukulele in tune. Hopefully you got it in a comfortable playing position. Again, rem always reminding people uh, uh, this is not the correct place for your ukulele. This is the correct place for your ukulele. Have it cl uncomfortably close to your face. Um, I do recommend that you get a strap on your ukulele and play with your ukulele with the strap because you're going to end up if you hang around with me very long we're going to be doing right hand and left hand stuff and pretty soon you're just dropping the ukulele so so be be mindful to get keep this up close to your face the other thing pad of your thumb back of the neck perpendicular to it, it runs up right along here that that will never change in my mind that is a rule and there's no no exceptions to it this is where you, you your thumb belongs don't let your thumb go this way don't let little kids, when you teach them, they'll, their thumb will actually drop underneath the fretboard. We don't want that. That's not ideal. Um, and your thumb spends all of its time hanging out right behind your middle finger. So if your middle finger needs to slide down, your thumb slides along with it. That's where your thumb lives. That's where your middle finger lives. Um, they're just buddies and they live together on the ukulele. That's what we want to, that's what we want in terms of just good posture with your ukulele. Um, next thing that we're going to talk about is how to make C chord, right? Everybody, this is where most everybody starts. Please, please, please use your ring finger. Okay, beautiful, absolutely. It's our home base. It's what we love. This is why people play ukulele. Um, uh, uh, it just sounds beautiful, right? Uh, next chord that comes up in the key of C is a minor. That one you're going to, now don't get all wild. Don't take everybody off and then try to put something on. You want to be thinking about rolling from chord to chord. In this case, we're hanging out here. The next chord we're going to do is A minor. And that's uh, fourth string, second fret. Fourth string, second fret. There's your middle finger right there. Nice strum pattern, right? That's sad. Okay. Major chords sound happy. Minor chords sound sad. That's a way oversimplification, but it's a fairly convenient way to think about the difference between major and minor. Okay. Now, again, don't yank off your middle finger. We're going to go to F chord. You're going to take your index finger. It's going to go second string, first fret. It's hard to show you. Okay. So I got an index finger here, middle finger up there. That's what you're looking at. Let's hear that. And if you're in any other ukulele class, then we, we have to deal with G chord, right? So let's talk about G chord. Let's talk about what I see when I'm teaching it and what you're going to find as a new, if you're a new player, here's the stuff you're going to face. And here's the stuff as a teacher. We got to make sure that our, our students are doing it correctly. i um, glad you're here, Joyce. Uh, when we go to G chord, okay, you need to make sure the index finger, third fret, second string. That's the important one right there. That's the important thing. If you can get them to do that note right there, if you can do that note right there, the other two fingers are going to behave pretty well. You're going to get your middle finger on that second fret down at the bottom, and then your ring finger jumps out. That's a G chord. That's what we want. Those of you who've got guitar background, it's a D chord. Okay. Here's the thing that comes up when you're teaching other people. 20 to 30 percent of my students will put their middle finger here their index finger here and their ring finger here and that's called upside downing that's my official term for that i'm going to write a book about it someday this is upside down g chord you cannot let them get away with this and i know for many people that feels way more comfortable especially when you've got the ukulele in proper playing position don't let people do that we've got to have index finger on top middle finger and then ring finger okay so when we and when you teach people this they're they're gonna hate it the other one i see pretty regularly is middle finger here and then ring finger getting tucked under there that's another configuration i see it from students a lot of times again don't let them do that that's not going to work out long term 
you want to get an index finger, middle finger, ring finger. Just, just make sure you do it correctly. Make sure your students do it correctly. Keep your thumb back behind that middle finger. Everybody's happy. Okay, let's hear that. Beautiful chord, right? Now with G chord, um, your students are going to be playing it like this. I don't know if any of you have ever made that sound. Um, that's, a, that's a very normal sound to come out of a ukulele. The big thing is they're just having struggles getting the shape on, and then um, they get it on, and then they forget to squeeze. Okay, And so, and so that's what we're working on with them. Um, let people know when they make a crappy sound, a cruddy sound, a not good sound on their ukulele, that that's the sound they're making right now, and it's okay. Don't let them lose their mind. Or my, I find that my more advanced students fight that more than anything. They've got to have beautiful tone all the time. This is ukulele. If it sounds like this, yeah, still a G chord, right? So don't don't worry about this cr crummy sound you're getting now. It goes away. It really, really, really will go away. It will go away as soon as I'm going to see if I can show you my um, right here. I have this muscle. Okay, mine kind of sticks up. I mean, you can't really see it on there, but that's the muscle we have to build. That one right there, and you, you don't know you don't build that muscle unless you play ukulele or guitar, or if you're a rock climber. I had a rock climber and <laughs> a nice big muscle there. So until then, you have to tell people, gosh, you got to squeeze a little bit hard. Now that's the opposite of what we're supposed to tell people. We're supposed to tell you just squeeze hard enough to just make a clean tone. The problem is in the beginning you don't have that enough strength in your hand yet, so you got to squeeze kind of hard and then you get that that's another reason to change your strings if you have white strings on them um, that's nyla gut which is not a great string it's what comes on everything these days um, that's why you want to switch to fluorocarbon sooner rather than later fluorocarbon is much softer and much easier to press down okay all right lots of lots of background for four chords okay i want to do four chords at a time so i'm going to do four of c four of a minor four of f and four of g and we're going to do that a few times get get the get the pattern going um while we're doing that pattern notice how common and how familiar that relationship feels in your ears you're going to be like yep i know that song from somewhere right it's just really such a common chord progression c chord a minor f g Okay, it's going to sound really, really comfy. We're going to go around through that pattern, I don't know, 200 times, and uh, you're going to get where you're feeling pretty solid with that. Here's the one thing I tell people. Don't camp out on your current chord. It's so easy to say, oh, I got my C chord on for a while, and then all of a sudden you're supposed to be on the A minor, but you're still, I got to catch up, right? Abandon your previous chord in more than enough time to be ready for the first beat of your next chord. It won't really matter, won't be a problem until you're hanging out on F, you get to the fourth beat, and then you're like, oh, crud, now I got to get started putting on my G chord. Um, leave that, abandon your F chord in plenty of opportunity and plenty of time to uh, uh, drop drop your G chord on. I'm going to make a minor modification to my microphones here so I can get it onto the ukulele just a little bit better. Apologize, you're probably hearing clonk, clonk, clonk. All right, let's see. Let's see if we can do that. Uh, uh, let's do that four chord pattern. Four beats of each chord. One, two, ready, play. C, two, three, four, A minor, two, three, four, and F, two, three, go to G, two, three, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, back to C, and C, dum, dum, da 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 dum, 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 da 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 dum, 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 da 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 dum, 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 da 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 one, two, get ready to move and jump, and a minor, two, three, add your index. You might want to move to G now if you've been fighting it. Go and G two, last time around. C da dum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum. Big finish on C here and...
Let your ukulele ring out. Hold on to your cord until your ukulele is done doing its job. It will stop sooner than you want it to. Um, hi, Susan. Glad you're here. All right. So those are your four chords. That's probably uh, your first chord progression. Those of you who are songwriters or think you're songwriters or somebody that has ever been mad at their ex-boyfriend, um, you need to have a chord progression so that you can write a song about it. That one's great. Okay, It's the exact same chord progression as we got on uh, this book. Remember this little book? And we had... Uh, a, F sharp minor, D, and E7. Um, it's the exact same uh, basic chord progression. Let me run through that one real quick. Okay. Same, same exact feeling. Bum, 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 bum. Sounds very 1950s. The one we just learned. Uh, let me do it again. has that very uh, characteristic, very common chord progression. You want to get pretty good at that. So I would say the C, A minor, F, and G progression is really important. Um, and then obviously, if you're teaching students, start them with this A, F sharp minor, D, and E7. It's much better uh, for, for new people. As more experienced players, you want to have both of them memorized. You really do need to know all those chords. They're going to come up in your life. Um, all right, I'm about to sing, and I apologize. It's never good. Um, we're going to sing Waltzing Matilda. Um, I do this song on, on almost every single time I teach um, Introduction to Ukulele. It's a song where most Americans are not that familiar with it, um, and so they don't come to it with a ton of preconceived notions about what they should be doing with their strumming pattern. I just like the fact that it sounds kind of familiar, but it's not really familiar for Americans. And... Um, what the other nice thing about it is it gives you a really great opportunity to get all of those four chords into different arrangements going from one to the other and, and so on when i'm singing don't fall asleep on the chord you're on get on that chord and then read forward in the line to see what your next chord is that's the critical part um is to be um i gotta move some sheet music here you don't you want to be on the next chord by the time you are by the time it, by when it's your turn to be there right and so if i go once a jelly and then all of a sudden i'm like oh crud i'm supposed to be on g by the time you get your g on we're already on a minor right that's the big challenge between playing at home and playing with a group that's why i always tell people you gotta do two things you gotta practice and you gotta show up you gotta get with other people to play because at home you're gonna go once a jolly and then you're gonna wait and then you swag man right and you, and you there's this big long pause between the hard chords um and when you get with other people the, that doesn't work and that's why we go to strum along classes it's why we get together with other people it's why you invite a friend over and you sit on the porch and have a glass of wine and drink that drink the wine <laughs> And play the ukulele if you're in denver they're closing the liquor stores on friday so you might want to get there all right here we go nice and steady we're going to just go all the way through that first verse and then we'll see uh how you're doing okay i'll do the intro and then we'll and then we'll uh keep going so here's the intro okay here we go and once a jolly swag man camped beside a billabong under the shade of a kulibba tree and he sang as he sat then he waited till his billy boy old joe come a waltzing matilda with me waltzing matilda waltzing Sing Matilda, you'll come a waltzing Matilda with me. And he sang as he sat, and he waited till his billy boy, oh, you come a waltzing Matilda with me. Let your ukulele ring out. All right. Big thing for you is, hey, was I fighting that at all, or was that going real smooth for me? If it's going real smooth for me, you're ready to be teaching ukulele. <laughs> Honestly, it's that that's your that's your official um, test. Uh, the other thing that I think is if you're fighting it, you're almost certainly fighting getting G chord on. That is one of the harder chords in, 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 when we're newer. Um, and so be working on that, you know, be thinking about if I'm on C, how do I get to G chord, right? And in, and in that case, I'm on C, 
I'm going to put my index finger down and grab my G chord, right? If I'm on uh, A minor and I got to get to G, I'm not sure you have to do that in this song. I'm going to get my index finger on and get G on. If I'm sitting at F, I'm going to move my index finger and get my G chord on. All of those things, I'm chasing my index finger around to get that right there so that then my G chord will come together. I think that that's helpful is to really be thinking about on G chord, all I got to do is get that finger there. Everything else will work out great. Um, also, in this going through that verse, I decided to give you all kinds of different strum patterns. One was just thumb down, one was index up and down, one was plucking these four strings, and one was doing a little bit of an arpeggio pattern. Those of you who are newer, honestly, a thumb down is beautiful. That will take you a long way. If you've been around playing a while, boy, the chords are not going to get more interesting, guys. The, you've got to make this hand more interesting. And so start being adventurous with this. There is no right answer in terms of strum patterns. The only two songs I know that are two, well, one artist and one song that I know you're supposed to get the strum pattern right. That's Goofy Israel's uh, strum pattern for Somewhere Over the Rainbow, and you don't have to do it. And the other one is uh, George Formby on banjo Laley has a very particular strum pattern. Uh, all, of, all of the old white guys in England that's what they do is just copy George Formby's strum pattern. Um, if you're from England, I'm, I'm giving you a little razz. Um, so what we want to do is you, as the artist, come up with your strum pattern for your right hand. All right, we're going to play the whole rest of the song. Okay, enough of me talking. Verse 2, all the way through. Um, and um, I'll try to keep it relatively slow. I'm going to switch my sum, strum pattern each verse um and you should too try some other stuff see what happens one two verse two down came a jump up to drink beside a billabong up jumped the swag man and grabbed him with glee and he sang as he stowed that jumbuck in his tucker bag you'll come a waltzing matilda with me waltzing matilda waltzing matilda you'll come a waltzing matilda with me and he sang as he stowed that jumbuck in his tucker bag you'll come a waltzing matilda with me keep going up jumped the squatter mounted on his thoroughbred down came the troopers one two three Saying, where's that jolly jumbuck you've got inside your tucker bag? You'll come a waltzing Matilda with me. Waltzing Matilda, waltzing Matilda. You'll come a waltzing Matilda with me. Saying, where's that jolly jumbuck you've got inside your tucker bag? You'll come a waltzing Matilda with me. Last verse. Walt jump the swag man, he bang into the billabong. You'll never catch me alive. Splash, and his ghost may be heard. As you pass along that billabong, you'll come a waltzing Matilda with me. Waltzing Matilda, waltzing Matilda, you'll come a waltzing Matilda with me. And his ghost may be heard as you pass along that billabong, you'll Come a waltzing Matilda with me. Big finish. Waltzing Matilda. Waltzing Matilda. You'll come a waltzing Matilda with me. And his ghost may be heard as you pass along that billabong. You'll come. 
come a waltzing Matilda with me. Ah, so beautiful. Um, except for my singing and my playing. Um, tremolo, we've covered this the last couple of days ago. We'll cover it again. Take your open palm, bend your index finger down. This is it. You're going to be going up and down as fast as you can. Notice I'm not doing my elbow. I'm doing my wrist. Okay, grab your C chord. Every single ukulele jam I've ever been to, every single song ends with a tremolo. It's just a goofy, fun thing that we like to do. And I think that uh, you want to get a little. We can go pretty fast. Um, back in the day, that's what made Jake Shimba Bukuro fast was uh, famous was he, he, on that video way back in when YouTube first started. His hand was going so fast you can't actually see it. It's not that hard to go that fast, but back in the early days of YouTube, we were easily impressed. Um, where's the Walton music for Walton? Uh, key, key of C strummers. Oh, it looks like you got that handle. Thanks, Joyce. Um, all right. So that's the four principal chords in the key of C. You don't have to necessarily understand what that means. What you should know is that if I took my thumb and I put a C chord here, C chord here, and then I said, well, this will be a D chord. This will be an E chord. On number four, you have an F chord. Number five, you have a G chord. And over here on number six, <laughs> that A minor is hanging out. So a lot of times you'll talk to folk musicians, and especially if you've taken classes other places, they're going to teach you that one, four, five pattern. One is C, four is F, five is G. Those those chords will always be hanging out as good friends together, um, and then they uh, very often are accompanied by the six minor. Okay, so it's over here. If I put A here, A, B, C, D, E, in our case, which we learned was E7, and uh, F sharp minor is sitting over here. Um, so that's from the little book, right? But the big thing is, is that um, when you meet uh, guitarists or musicians who are like, I don't need sheet music, um, what they're using is that one, four, five pattern. Most every folk song in the world will follow that pattern. Uh, one, four, and five are very important chords in the typical uh, folk music genre okay let's talk very quickly about soft kitty remember a couple days ago i gave you the full sheet music for her. ridiculous had harmonic and line on and all this stuff this is what uh, soft kitty would look like if you went to a strum along uh they'd get rid of all that nonsense and they just say here's the words here's the chords let's go have a good time and that's what you want to have uh for uh, uh well, that's what, that's what I'm trying to get away from, is this kind of arrangement. But let's take a minute to double check F chord and roll down to C7. Let's give you a chance to review what we did the other day. F, C7, F, C7, F, C7. Just take a minute to get comfy with that. Try not to do F, pull it off, put on C7. We don't like that. That's going to take you too much time. One, two, ready, play. Soft kitty warm kitty little ball of fur happy kitty sleepy kitty purr 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 let your ukulele ring the uh those of you who know big bang theory will know that um, um i if you make a mistake you have to do it again all right now flip the page to the to the next page over is kookaburra um, I'm going to run through just one verse of it so you kind of know how it goes. Those of you who are Girl Scouts, you already know how it goes. Um, but I just want to run through this real quick so you get a sense of what, um, what the melody sounds like, and then you can go mess around with it. And, you know, of course, you can YouTube it, and there's 8 billion co uh, versions of this on YouTube. Um, the big difference here, you're going, to go, you're going to use a C chord, you're going to use the A minor chord, you're going to use the F chord, and then you're going to use what most people feel is an easier chord than G. You're going to use the G7. So index finger stays where it was on F. You're just going to have these two guys right there. Middle finger, third string, second fret. This one on first string, second fret. And, and that's a G7. Seventh chord sound nervous. Because they want to be a C chord. They want to be resolved to the main chord. Okay, in this case, C is our main chord. Uh, G7s want to resolve to C. 
Okay. I like to say they're teenagers, of course. They are full of drama, just waiting to flower into something beautiful. Okay. Uh, those of you who are writers, uh, you know the denouement, right? Big, big exciting moment right before the right before the end of this story, and then blah, and then we're all resolved. Okay. I'm just going to do one verse. Uh, I want to do verse number three because I think it's the greatest verse of music ever written in the history of mankind. Verse number three. One, two, ready, play. Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree, chasing all the monkeys that he can see. Stop, Kookaburra, stop. Kookaburra, that's not a monkey, that's me. Beautiful, absolutely fun song to play. Um, if you, like I say, this, some of you have grown up singing these songs different ways in folk music. Sing it your way. You know, I'm not a great singer. I'm just doing it the best I can. All right, <laughs> okay. Which sadly, that is the best I can. All right. Um, I also on that piece of paper I gave you somewhere over the rainbow. Um, not that I want you to play it because you shouldn't. Um, one, uh, even if you've got this drum pattern exactly right, you probably don't have the right ukulele. You need to have a low G ukulele to make it work properly. Uh, the other thing on uh, Somewhere Over the Rainbow is you, you can't sing like Israel. I don't, I don't care how good you are. You just can't do it. And so no matter what you do, it's always a bit of a disappointment. So I hand it out because a lot of new students want to have it. And you, um, and you can hand that out to your students and say, here it is. But I have, uh, I've played it at a couple of funerals along with a singer, but I have never actually taught it. Um, it's just, it's just not going to sound good, and so don't waste your time on it. Uh, the other one that's in your packet is Lava, um, and you should go um, on to YouTube and look at the video of that. It's super cute. It's about a volcano and love and all this stuff, and uh, um, that's the um, the. Um, arrangement I put together right after the movie came out. And uh, uh, the interesting thing about playing along that music, playing along with the video, is the guy who plays in the video isn't that great of a ukulele player. And so he speeds up and slows down and his strum strumming is a little awkward. Uh, but it's, it is actually one, if you are a teacher, you can actually put the video onto the screen or onto your laptop or whatever, and then have everybody in your class strum along with it. Um, it's, uh, it's a cute little story. It's nice. Um, um, all right, now that's enough strumming, right? So hopefully you know that um, uh, there's strumming is important. It's absolutely something you should learn how to do. All of us ukulele players do it to some extent. Um, I I don't do it anymore because I've eh, I've had enough of it. But uh, but all new students should get some basic strumming uh, under their belts. Um, again, thumb down is very, very straightforward, nice, steady beat with your thumb. Um, if you want to do index finger up and down, that's another very effective way. Um, plucking with all fours, or sometimes all just three, sometimes only two, all right, whatever, whatever, that's a particular one. Uh, and then um, arpeggio picking. Okay, that's really the, the main things you can do. There's a couple other fancy things you can do on the right hand, but th those are the big ones. All right, let's run now to what was the next thing I said we we're going to do? We're going to do Brahms Lullaby. All right, we're going to play a little classical music. Um, if you will get Brahms Lullaby up on your um, music stand or on your kitchen table or wherever you're looking at stuff. Let me see if I can get my copy of it up here. All right. Uh, Brahms Lullaby is the one you put the baby to sleep with, right? It's absolutely beautiful on ukulele. It has C chord, which we like. It has G7. I just touched my face. Don't touch your face. Um, G7 is uh, the easier of the two G chords to learn. And then, of course, it's got F in there. We're going to run through. Um, uh, we'll sing. Well, eh, we don't need to sing it. That's fine. You can figure that out on your own. Lullaby and good night. Blah, 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 blah. Just if you are a chord person go through sing those sing the song along with the chords um, and uh, you'll be happy that you did that the words are not easy to sing they're very old-fashioned um, and so those of you with great singing voices there you go let's go directly now down to the ukulele line um, the ukulele melody line one note at a time there's only zeros there's ones there's two is there any twos there's some twos and some threes in here that's it so that means you're playing in first position 
Index fingers play all the ones, middle finger plays all the twos, ring finger plays all the threes. And as far as I know, I'm peeking through real quick. That's all there are in this song. Your job is to get your finger onto the right string and then pluck it, and you're going to be golden. Okay? I'm going to go slow the first time through. Then uh, when we hit measure 16, we go back to measure 1. We're going to play all the way back down through it, and then we're going to end on the second ending. So the last time we go through it, go from skip over measure 16. That's what the brackets are above that repeat. We do play measure 16 the first time. We don't play it the second time. We play measure 17 the second time. Grab your ukulele, get it in playing position. If you haven't had tablature before, you might want to go uh, review the video we did a couple of days ago on Frere Jaca. Um, and you might want to spend some time with this. This is the most important thing that I teach is how to read tablature, and you can do it. You, you will learn it by taking that Frere Jaca uh, video. All right, ready? Nice and slow. One, two, zero, zero, three. Zero, zero, three, zero, three, three, two, zero, three, two, two, oh, one, two, two, oh, one, two, one, two, oh, three, two, three, oh, oh, three. Oh, one, three. Oh, oh, one, three. Oh, three. Oh, oh, three. Oh, one, three. Oh, oh, one, oh, two, oh. To the top. Oh, oh, three. Oh, oh, three. Oh, three, three, two. Oh, oh, three, two, oh, one, two, two, oh, one, two, one, two, oh, three, two, three. Oh, oh. Oh, one, three. Oh, oh, one, three. Oh, three. Oh, oh, three. Oh, one, three. Oh, oh, one, oh, two, oh. Nice. Pretty little tune, right? Nice melody. Um, if you were keeping up, you're ready to be a teacher. If you're struggling a little bit, you're ready to be a teacher. All right. So the the big thing here is uh, making sure you're playing in first position. Other than that, not a whole lot of um, difficulty. Um, as long as you hit the right measure or the right fret in the right string and happen to pluck that, um, you might find occasionally when you're newer um, and when you also when you've been playing for 20 years uh, that occasionally you hit the wrong string. You have everything perfect over here and you hit the wrong string. Sounds kind of weird. It's not a mistake. You're just playing it the jazz version. You just move right on along and keep keep on playing. Okay. Pretend there are no mistakes, so don't even acknowledge them. Move on to the next thing. All right. Now, for those of you who are getting tough acts or tough uke in this case, um, um, chord melody, um, I'm going to walk through it every single thing, and then we'll go back through and we'll play it once, okay? Because we're getting running at the time. It's just racing by. You just can't even believe it. Okay? Let's go from the top. You're going to hit those two zeros. Zero, zero. Take, you got zero, zero, three. I'm holding my ring finger on that third, third fret, second string. And I'm taking my thumb, driving it down. Make sure you're rest stroking on string one because you're not going to play that. Now you're going to take your ring off and play two more zeros. Zero, zero. Measure two is strum. Zero, three. Measure three. You got a nice um, C chord there. Zero, 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 three. Strum it. Hit the two. Now. Measure four, you're going to put your G7 chord on, but you have to leave the fourth, the first string open, okay? So your ring finger doesn't press down and just strum it. That sounds cool. 
ring finger is now going to grab the three. And then your um, middle finger is already holding down the two. So pluck that. And then you're going to hit the, hit, the, hit, I'm sorry, after the two, you're going to hit a zero. Put your G7 back on and strum down. Zero, two, one. Hit the two. Two. Now you got to lose your index finger here. Oh, put it back down. Zero, two, one. Two, one. Finally, we get to strum the whole G7 chord at major seven. Strum. Oh, three. A nice C chord at measure eight. Okay, beautiful. Let's keep going. Zero, zero. Here's where things are going to make you sad. Okay, you want it would be nice if this always worked out perfectly, but it doesn't. Uh, measure nine, you got an F chord. Okay, then you grab the chord, but then notice you got to have a three on the first string. Now, sometimes I, I back in the day, I always used a ring finger there and I was missing it all the time. So I switched to my pinky finger. I think you'll be more successful with that that way. F chord, pinky finger on the first string, third fret, and strum that. Beautiful. Take it that pinky off. Oh, one. Then you got zero, zero, three. Then you got two zeros. Oh, oh, put your G7 on, but don't put your first uh, string, don't fret your first string. Strum three, three, oh, and then you got that zero, zero, three pattern again. Play the two zeros, zero, zero. Here's that F chord with your pinky again. Strum that. Hit the zero and the one. And then zero, zero, three. And then the two zeros. Nice G7 here. Lose the index finger, hit the two, and hit these two zeros. Beautiful. All right. We're going to make the repeat. We're going to start. We're going to hit those last two zeros. Go back up, play the whole thing, and then finish up on measure 17. By the way, when you are at home, uh, you should play the repeats. You should work on the repeats. I took piano lessons for 10 years. I don't think we ever once played a repeat ever in 10 years. But when you are at home, especially on ukulele, especially if you're newer to sheet music, learn these how to read these repeats. I spend most of my time with the orchestra, what I consider to be a little bit wasted time, covering how to read repeats, how you get to that bottom of 16, go back up, come back down the second time, don't play 16, play 17. So reading repeats is a very important musical skill, and um, I want you to be comfy with it, right? So the way you do that is just practice them at home. We're going to play top to bottom. Here we go. One, two. We're playing the second time through top to bottom. So we're starting at the lola at the end of 16, going up to one, playing down through 15, skip 16 and go to 17 from the bottom. Oh, oh, strum. Oh, oh, strum. Oh, three, strum. Two, oh, strum. Three, two, oh, strum. Two, two, oh, strum. Two, one, strum. Beautiful. That's how we play that song. Hopefully that's that's a lot, right, in, a, in five minutes or ten minutes. Um, when you are working on something like this, um, slow down, slow way down, 
get where you're smooth as humanly possible playing whatever style you're playing. If you're playing just chords and singing, you want those chord changes to be smooth. If you are playing straight melody, you want that to just be absolutely in time. And if you are playing the tough uke, um, that's what, that's the hard stuff, right? And guys, it's not something that just jumps in your lap and you can do it right away. It is something that takes a little bit of work. Um, one of the things ukulele players are known for is wanting everything to be easy, and I'm giving you something that's kind of hard. Okay, so so know that if you're struggling with it, you should be. It's hard. Um, all right, let's move on to the next song, which I told you would be Yankee Doodle. Um, and, uh, and so let's grab that real quick. Um, where is my copy? Come here. All right, guys, I'll get to it. There it is. Um, if you have my intro book, um, you've got Yankee Doodle and Yankee Doodle Dandy. We're not doing Yankee Doodle Dandy. We're doing Yankee Doodle. Okay, that was on the internet uh, or on the Jolly Roger ukulele site. All right, again, same same basic chord pattern. You got your Cs. In this case, instead of G7, you got real Gs. So that's one reason to practice this. Go through and sing it. Um, no, no, nobody ever wants to hear you play Yankee Doodle, but this is a great Pratt song to practice that with. Okay, so there's your C, your G, and your F in here. Um, we're gonna run through the melody real quick because there is an important moment here. In the melody, your first note is three, three five seven right that's how you begin if you are following the rules of first position playing you would start with the three now your next note's a five and you're going to play it with your pinky probably in desperation and then you're out of fingers to play this seven so what i recommend just start in third position put your index finger on three and then you can use your ring finger on five and reach your pinky up to get that seven and then you've got that that part covered Notice all the way into measure eight, um, I'm sorry, into measure six, my music's my dead. You ever buy one of these and you take it to concert and you get there and you're all proud of yourself for remembering it and then the batteries are dead? That's me. Um, let's play this in third position. We're going to play up there all the way through measure six and then we can slide back into first position to finish the song up. Just the ukulele melody line right now, one note at a time. Take your time. You're probably going to use your thumb to pick this if you are I've been around a long time and you want to be using uh, alternating index and middle fingers. That's a great uh, next level skill to be working on. From the top, one, two, three, four. Three, three, five, seven, three, seven, five, three, 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 five, seven, three, two, three, three, five, seven, eight, seven, five, three, two, three, oh, two, three, three, zero, two, zero, three, oh, two, three, three, oh, three, one, zero, three, zero, two, zero, three, Oh, two, three, oh, three, three, two, five, three, three. Beautiful. You know the melody, right? Again, being in third position is going to make that top half of the song much easier to play. It's a good opportunity for you to strategize about playing melody lines straight through. All I'm going to do is play the tough acts for you so that uh, you guys can uh, take a look at where my fingerings are. Um, this is a thing to work on um, on your own at home. I will point out at measure six, you have five, 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 eight. Okay, that's an F chord. It's beautiful, right? It's going to come up in your life. You're going to put a bar on five, pinky on eight. When you see that coming, that's what you're going to do. Everything else is stuff you already know how to do. All right, I'm going to play from the top. If you want to play with me, that's awesome. If you want to just watch, that's also awesome, okay? One, by the way, um, 
I'm probably going to play this in third position as well because I the only thing that I've got to do is get back to my G chord uh, when it comes up. So I'm probably going to play my C chord with my index finger. Um, it feels like sacrilege. One, two, ready, play. on this until the ukulele is done ringing. Um, YouTube has been really nice about uploading these videos right after we're done with the class. So um, you should be able to go to my channel quickly, uh, relatively quickly after this class and um, join that. Uh, sirens going on in the back. You guys can probably hear that. Last thing, run through little boxes. I don't want to go cover it in detail. I just want you to have it as one of those things to start messing around with. Let's run to that very quickly. Um, and I'm going to get you out of here. Um, little boxes, H I J K L. There it is. Little boxes is the theme song to Weeds. Those of you who are millennials know what this mute, what the uh, show Weeds is. Those of the, and nobody else knows that. But I get a lot of younger people, you know, in their thirties that want that know this song pretty well because it's the theme song to Weeds. Um, it's also for those of you who are a little bit a little bit more advanced than millennials uh, age wise. Uh, Pete Seeger made this song famous with his banjo back in the day, um, and it was written by a French woman named Malvina, which I love that name. All right, uh, very quickly. The, the thing to notice on this is that it's supposed to be um, in swing time. You'll see a dotted eighth note followed by a sixteenth note. If you don't know what that is, perfectly fine. Just know that it's it's not little boxes on the hillside. That's not how you're supposed to play it. Little boxes on the hillside. Little boxes made of ticky tacky. Little boxes on the hillside. Little boxes, all the same. And so that's what you're working on. It's getting that nice sort of loping as if you're on a galloping horse feeling. That's that swing time that, we, that uh, is really, really fun to play as a ukulele player. I'm going to play through just the tough acts. Those of you guys that are working on learning your melody lines, your ukulele melody lines, you should be able to go through here. Notice you've got a seven hanging out in there. And so you're going to strategize around which, which uh, finger and how which position you want to play. Um, and then you're um, um, also um, looking at getting that F chord on with your pinky there. That's going to come up as well um, on the tough tough uke line. Let me play it through real quick so you have a sense of how it goes. Something for you to work on tonight, tomorrow. Um, one, two, three, yo, strum, oh, three, yo, strum. So that's kind of how it goes. Uh, made a ton of mistakes in there, but the idea is 
um, just to try to get that loping feeling to that song. It's actually a really fun, pretty little tune. Um, and that's that's a stretch piece for some of you. Stretch piece for me, obviously. I haven't been working on it. So uh, uh, if you have any last minute questions, I'll take them over in the box. Um, I do need to get on to, the, to my guitar lesson here in five. And well, I probably need to get going now. Um, I hope all of you guys have a wonderful evening. I'm going to probably do this at 4 30 from now on instead of the 11 o'clock time so um just let me let me know in the in via email if that's a major problem or whatever um and then uh you can always go back and double check on youtube um what's going on with this i know this is for some of you your dinner time hour um but uh I, I, in order to work here at the house, I have to work around my work at home length. And so we want to make sure to make the internet available for her for real job and for me to goof around here in the afternoon. Uh, let's see. This is great. Makes me realize I know more than I thought I knew. I knew you knew more than you knew, Amy. Thank you. Good job, Amy. Uh, 4.30 will probably be our regular time going forward. Anytime is fine with me. Got time. <laughs> oh, yeah, we all have too much time on our hands. All right, guys. Stay home. I'll see you guys uh, tomorrow around this time. Have a wonderful night. Ending the stream. <laughs>